Hi everyone, it's Deborah. I uh, wanted to give you all a quick video to let you know what's going on in my life. I, the minute I got off that plane, I've been going 60 miles an hour. No, 90 miles an hour. Uh, it's so bad at my house, I'm using the same spoon to stir my coffee for three days in a row. It's that bad. My son's coming over to help me empty out the car so I can give everybody their gifts uh, that I bought for them. And uh, I don't know, this is the bad thing about going on a vacation. It takes you weeks to get acclimated and to get your house back the way it was. Uh, but my son is en route. He wanted to have lunch with me. How nice is that? Uh, I mean, I don't even have time to set up my tripod. <laughs> it's that bad. But yeah, I went right back to work immediately upon arriving back in the U.S. And I surely have missed everybody there. So forgive me if you don't hear from me the next day or two. I promise. I have so many good videos lined up for you all. Uh... What else? Yeah, my daughter drove her RV from Georgia up to Virginia, so I get to see her tomorrow. I'm going to do a video. Hopefully, her house don't look like mine. Hi, everyone. It's Deborah. I just dropped off my daughter at her RV campground, and I was up all night, and I do mean all night. Evidently, it's been a week. I always start getting a little bit sick a week after I return from one climate to another. I'm congested, so I had to spray my Demista up in my nose, which will help. And I also took a steroid off the Medrol dose pack because that will help with the swelling in my nose. My daughter said she didn't get any sleep because I was up all night. Plus, I had a wiener dog up against my back. I'm not used to having wieners in my bed. That's right. Whoa. I have to go 25. I'll get in trouble if I don't go 25 miles an hour. So, I am not prepared to have company. That's the problem. I, I, I hadn't even... I just now unloaded my suitcases yesterday out of my son did for me yesterday I had no clean laundry I have about 10 loads to do so my daughter says mom I don't have anything clean so I spent the day and a half doing her laundry and <laughs> that's 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 bad I got because she she brought her motorcycle to my house and uh, because she can't lift it to put it on the back of her RV. She's got the rack and everything, but we, me and her are not too strong because I'm disabled and I can't do anything risky like that. Just like I told you, I was carrying around a coconut in my beach bag and I got my bag killed me for a week. Yeah, that's another reason why I can't have a dog, especially a dachshund, because they're low to the ground and you can't let them jump off furniture or go downstairs because they they suffer from this, the, the, you know, this degenerative disc disease, just like I have. And I can't bend down to pick them up to, to put them on the bed or the couch or to go up and downstairs. I cannot bend down and do that kind of stuff anymore. I did it for 20 some years and I can't do it anymore. Plus when you're living in a place that's 1,000 square foot, that's not, that, that's, that's really not good for an animal that they need, they need, they need a dog park or a backyard and I don't have that. Yeah, I see these videos on Facebook where, where the dogs know they're going to the dog park and they just get so excited, you know. So, I told my daughter where to get really good deviled eggs. And, oh my God, she went and got them and ate them all before she got back to her campsite, you know. <laughs> so, I love these earrings. They're black. Okay. 
so at least she helped me take out five loads of boxes and trash so that helped me a lot this morning now the forsythia are in bloom those yellow flowers those are the first ones that starts blooming okay when those forsythia come out that's when you put down your pre-emergent your weed pre-emergent make sure the bag says pre-emergent um, because that will get any weeds that's going to come out in the future not the ones that's already out but the ones that's going to come out better better hit the gas a little bit so I need bird seed I'm gonna go by family dollar and look at their two uh, outdoor chairs because I was on Pier One's website last night for outdoor furniture, and they were like $300 for two. And I have some kind of heavy people in my family, so I've got to make sure I get a sturdy chair. I guess the best one is steel. I guess they have steel or whatever. I used to, I had them in my farm. I gave all that to my ex. So here's some news. And I started smoking yesterday again. It's just cause my son came over yesterday so disheartened about his dad and my daughter went through this two months ago where she says she doesn't wanna ever like see him again. She's very upset at him. He has no empathy and he is a very true covert narcissist. And my son has realized it and my son knows he's got to get away because my children have nervous tics. My daughter bites her nails constantly. She actually bit off 10 fake fingernails. And I said, don't spend your money on that. Put it into something else. That is, women who go get their nails done like that, they got too much time on their hands. Let me tell you what. If I had that kind of time, honey, I'd be washing my ba my bathroom floors. It takes two hours every two weeks out of your life, plus it's about $45 or $50, because you gotta leave a tip. I would rather spend that on food, definitely. So, plus it ruins your nail beds. You don't know that, but it does. So that's my daughter's nervous tick. She's always got her fingers in her mouth. I'm constantly getting after her. And she would do it till her nail beds just bleed. My son does the same thing. It's because of their dad. Um, now I do have a nervous tick. I sniff because I, I've been in lots of car accidents when I was a cop. And this little bone right here got broke. And it causes me to, to like sniff because I have allergies. Oh, there's a dead deer on the side of the road. Okay, so my son's tick is he used to blink. Well, he got over that. Now his new one is clearing his throat. And they know they have these ticks. And I told my son, I said, once you get away from your dad, these will subside a little bit. Because when you're living under that kind of mental abuse, it really does affect your body in many, many ways. And this is what I'd like to tell all of y'all. If you are in a relationship where you can't sleep at night because you're ruminating, that's what it's called, ruminating, you're going over the thoughts of the day. Well, why did that person do this? Why are they so mean? Uh, you know, if you can't get a good night's sleep because you're wor worrying about someone that you're in love with, that's not good. If you've got high blood pressure problems, high cholesterol, that is another big red flag. And if you're with somebody who doesn't tell you where they're at for two and three days at a time, honey, it's time to lose them. Uh, yeah. But let me tell you what the most upright, upstanding citizens can be the worst tyrants. Their friends and family might just love them, but the minute you get some of these kind of people alone in a house, those are the ones, you know, it's like I gotta say, like Chris Watts, you know, the man who put his children in the oil tanks. 
this is what is so important. If you all have never listened to anything I've ever said, listen to this. If you know or even think that your spouse or boyfriend or girlfriend could harm you if you if you let them know that you're leaving them, or if you're the one who's getting ready to leave, always have a trusted person with you. If now the, the problem with Shannon Watts is she came in at 1.30 at night. The first thing they do is, you know, make love. And then he says, you know, gets on top of her and says, oh, I'm leaving you. I want a divorce. And that's when she said, according to him, oh, you'll never, you know, you're not going to see your kids. When you have somebody on top of you or their hands around your throat, you don't say things like that. You wait till you're in a public situation or you with somebody that you trust then or a counselor or a lawyer or something. You don't do it alone in the house in the middle of the night. And uh, I, t I told my son, I said, you better, you better sneak out. You better sneak away in the middle of the night. I had to do that when I finally left my ex. I had to sneak away. I, I couldn't let anybody know my plan. No one it's a very dangerous it's a it's like the critical hour you know critical hours like when you're having a heart attack you've got like 15 minutes to get to the call the ambulance or whatever the same thing here it's a critical hour when when you know you're getting ready to leave somebody or they're getting ready to leave you honey you better have somebody with you and for god's sake if you are having any kind of trouble with your lover got to got to go and put the weapons behind a lockbox definitely so I know this is a depressing subject but it needs to be talked about you don't want to be that statistics that statistic yeah yeah my daughter is a nervous wreck I told you she had court the other day it's a shame that Abuse runs from one generation to another. Don't think it doesn't run like that because everybody's affected by abuse. In some manner, some way, the children especially. If you are in a house where it's always arguing, don't stay for the children. Leave because that if, that is that is the worst thing you can do. And I'm sure a lot of... Uh, educated psychiatrists will tell you don't stay together for the children because they need to be with loving parents or not even the real parent it can be uh, you know a parent, oh, someone who's acting like a parent they need to see that you love each other that is the best grounds that's the best I guess foundation that every child needs is to know that they are loved by both people in their lives. Okay, I'm going to say goodbye.